Hi, I'm Daz. Um, another radio cassette? Me. No, this one's a little bit different. I think if you look at the title of it, it's a Fidelity. It was made in the early 80s. Battery saver radio cassette recorder. And it's got this automatic battery charger on. Now, there isn't much information about these, but from what I understand, um, there was a series of radios, and I didn't know there was a radio cassette, but what they feature is a novel way of increasing the life of zinc chloride batteries. Um, it's got a charger in it that, that can extend the life of zinc chloride. Now they're not normally rechargeable as being a primary cell, but that's why I bought it really, not because it's a radio cassette. It's in reasonable nick, it plays, the motor's a bit noisy and the telescopic aerial is a bit loose. I don't think it should be quite like that, but it's how the uh, charging circuit works that interests me. So um, that's what I think I'll concentrate this video on. I think we all know how radio cassettes work by now. Well, I'm just looking at the rest of this recorder. It's very, very basic. We have got a tone control. It's an FM medium wave and has the long wave, being a British set, so you can listen to uh, Radio 4. Um, tape radio, there's a sleep function again that uses the auto stop on the cassette player to stop the sleep, uh, stop the radio at the end of play. Probably with a loud clonk which would wake you up anyway. Um, round the back, there's a mains inlet and battery compartment which takes four D cells. There is a monitor switch that will be for recording um, so it probably hasn't got a variable monitor on it and I assume that's an airphone jack that almost looks like an afterthought. And that's all the sockets you've got so um, not much versatility for recording but again as I said um, goes reasonably loud I think you can hear the motor's quite noisy. So I've just attached the mains lead to it. If I plug it in, the automatic battery charger LED has illuminated. So that means it is actually now refreshing the batteries, which is rather interesting. Here we can see the oscilloscope, and what I've done is I've connected a one ohm resistor in series with the batteries so we can see what's going into the batteries. There we go. We're on 50 millivolts so that's 50 milliamps per division. You can see there's a current positive pulse coming in at 25 milliamps I'd say. Then that dies down and then you can see this actually goes to discharge. A resting period then a charge and a discharge and charge and discharge so that's very interesting waveform it's putting power in and then drawn a little bit of power out so a look inside the fidelity I've got the back off now well the telescopic area is loose because the mounting plastic tab has uh, broken off the back of the case so some good glue may fix that so what have we got well we've got a couple of ICs that's presumably the audio output IC and this one is for the uh, radio, probably the radio IF. There is some transistors here, that looks like the front end for FM has got some transistors, probably the oscillator. I noticed there's a, <coughs> a ferret device here, inductor. I've got a feeling this does have AC bias looking at that, even though I was just driving the arrays head, but I'd be surprised if it wasn't AC arrays now looking at it. Uh, sorry, AC bias. Um, quite a lot of these grey capacitors. Um, belt is a little bit on the loose side. Metal flywheel, it's a very small one, but nevertheless it's quite deep, so it's not bad. All plastic mechanism, um, some yellowing of the plastic. And of course the interesting bit, is here's the power transformer, and here's the extra circuitry. Um, this resistor looks a little bit um, worse for the wear. Let's zoom in to that circuit board. There we go. See, I don't know if you can see the resistor looks like it's been a little bit on the hot side. Um, yeah. um, on that board is a transistor and a FET, and I noticed there's two presets. Um, so that's uh, rather interesting. 
there's a Zener die, so this is connected to the battery, so I definitely think this is the power saver circuitry um, on here. So um, perhaps I'll have a look at that and see if I can work out um, what makes it tick. Right, so I've done a bit of reverse engineering, but first of all, I did some investigation about what they call dirty DC charging. I know this is a pretty simple circuit I've seen before. There's a light bulb here, it's a current limit. This is a transformer, probably about 6 volts. You've got a rectifier diode and a resistor across it. So effectively you put a pulse of DC into the battery, but every half cycle the voltage discharges back through the transformer because of the opposite polarity. Um, thus you're getting a positive pulse and a little negative pulse, positive pulse. Very much like what we saw in the beginning. Well, <laughs> that's complicated. Well, maybe not. Okay, so we've got a steady DC voltage produced here by this um, half wave rectifier. So there's 20 volts there. This one's interesting. You've got a um, half wave again, but it goes to a resistor to ground via the LED and via a capacitor. So effectively, what you've got is a pulse going positive and then you've discharged the capacitor through that resistor during the other half cycle. So you've got your positive voltage going through a variable resistor, so that sets your positive current and this presumably sets the negative current, which is preset. There's the LED. Um, so that you've got a, a pulse here and a steady DC here. This side, well, we've got a Zener diode, potential divider, the emitter of a PMP transistor, the base of which is connected to the battery, collector of which is connected to this FET. So effectively we've got a voltage regulator there. So I guess the idea is when the battery voltage comes up above, uh, goes below 5.85, current does start to indeed flow into the batteries. But once that voltage is reached, it's switched off. Well, I thought I'd make it a little easier to understand because I think I'm struggling to explain this circuit. Um, there's point A in the circuit, which is this resistor, which is part of the um, half wave rectification circuit, which doesn't have the smoothing. And there's point B in the circuit. So here we go. So the bottom trace is point A. As you can see, it the zero I put the zero point here where my finger showing these two graticals down. As you can see there's a slope there and it goes to almost to zero, then up and almost to zero. This second trace, B at the top, um, the zero point is the middle of the graticle like it should be. And you can see it goes up about five it start it goes down to about five volts and then goes up to around about 12 or 13 volts. So hopefully that just hope just uh, helps the um, demonstrate. If I pull the batteries off, you can see the two voltages go up considerably and the waveform considerably changes as well. That's with the batteries disconnected. This dirty DC, the idea is that you get a little bit of charge and a little bit of discharge. Now the idea of this, from what I've read, is when you're um, charging well, the obviously non-rechargeable battery, this periodic reverse helps make sure that the coating you put on the plate of the battery is a little bit more even. That's what I understand in any case. Right, well I'm just progressing on to the other little problems. The, uh, <coughs> come on focus, the uh, plastic tab that holds the telescopic aerial on has broken off so what I've done is I've put a, a small metal spacer might be hard to see this, a metal spacer and put a nut in, the, or sorry, a bolt in the uh, other side not cosmetically the best thing but at least now the aerial stays in position um, definitely a noisy motor I've took the belt off so you can hear it 
So yeah, that's pretty noisy. Uh, belt's very loose as well. I'm hoping that it's the front bearing, otherwise I'm going to have to take the whole lot out, which is going to be a bit of a pain. Well, a lot of screws later, and I have the mechanism out, I'm going to have a look at the motor at the back and just see uh, what the situation is with it. It's still squealing slightly. This doesn't all fall to bits in the process of turning it. Here's the uh, front of the mechanism just from rubber idlers used there. That's interesting, spring there. Ah, oh, that looks like a form of earthy uh, there. That's like a bit of wire wrapped and it's sort of making contact with the uh, um, making contact with the uh, uh, capstan. Couldn't think of the name of the damn thing. Yeah, let's just try to... Oh right, the erase head is just this white wire, so I couldn't figure out how it was connected. Um, there's a little bit of yeah mess on the uh, front panel there, where you can just see where the motor is. So that's obviously grease or something rubbed off onto it. Um, I can't see a screw to release the motor cap. It's a bit worrying. Uh, is there a date code? It's a six volt motor, we knew that two nine eight oh five possibly. Yeah. I'll see if I can get into the top of that motor and I think I'll give this a clean while I'm at it as well. Well I wasn't expecting that, it's uh <laughs> AC bias on the head, but DC on the arrays head. So that's kind of um interesting. Um Obviously they couldn't stretch to the money to drive the arrays head, so uh, yeah, kind of interesting I guess. Well I've replaced the 33 microfarad capacitor and I think the waveform looks a little bit better to, to my mind now. We've got a much more definitive uh, negative peak um, where it's discharging. So yeah, that probably is about what it should be. Um, you can adjust it, but uh, I think I'll leave alone in this case. But, uh... Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test of the Fidelity MCR4 battery saver radio cassette recorder. Testing. I've used rechargeable alkaline technology before, and I've also owned a charger that's uh, designed to refresh batteries, and I had mixed results. Um, the alkaline system I had was a proper Rayovac system. Um, some of the batteries charged really well, but others did decide to leak in the finish. But, uh, you know, it's a, an interesting concept, but I don't think I'm going to be recharging alkaline batteries or carbon zinc batteries. It's a little risky, there's risk of the battery exploding, so it's not really for me. But, uh, you know, we've got plenty of other technologies now which is supposedly better, which is why I'll show you this. Um, this is my uh, solar battery charger, as you can see. The uh, battery's got a little bit grumpy and it's pushed the whole frame up and out. So that's not uh, too clever, so perhaps modern battery technologies aren't perfect either. By any means, as long as it doesn't explode, I'll be happy. Anyway, thanks for watching the video and I hope, hope you found uh, the radio cassette interesting with its little uh, battery saver technology in it.